My brother, how are you? There. I'm great. How are you doing? I am good, man. So good to see you. You as well, man. You as well. You, you, you have your, your, your father knows mouth. Can't I will say. <laughs> that, that means that means not a jacket then. That's a wonderful thing. <laughs> exactly, exactly, exactly. <laughs> oh, you keep up, bro. You look good, man. You look good. Thank you. And so do you. So do you. Thanks, man. I bungle up because it did cold, but you know. I mean, I like cold enough. <laughs> Listen, you must used to it by now, bro. Never get used to it. Yeah? Never, never. I left New York in 68, I'm sorry, in 86. Yeah. But 69, I, in the blizzard, yeah. I was leaving ass prints, not footprints, ass prints in the <laughs> snow, which means I had to step over and sit. Right. Before the other step. I said, no, no, no. There has Yo. to be a, a choice. And that's why you choose Kelly? Actually, Kelly chose me, you know. Oh, yes, sir. Yeah, man. Kelly chose me because one Sunday, snow was falling outside and the, 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 the sun came through the blinds and woke me up. And I opened my eyes and I heard something say, you need to go to California. And I jump up. And I look around, it's like, what the, was I sleeping? You know, what's up, you know? So I say, you know, I, mean, I lose my head, right? So I go back down. And then I, I hear it again. And then I open up and I get up. And my post, my, my, my post name, um, Celeste, mm. was sitting at the head of the bed. And Celeste look around so. And I look upon Celeste and say, Celeste, we're going to California. Um, um, I was in college. I was in Boston, at Boston University. And I was working, get this. Hold on. We start the interview yet? Or? Yeah, we, we, we start, man. Or is a reasoning? It's not an interview, you know. It's a reasoning. Okay, all right. Good, 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 good. I called my mother and I said, look, I'm coming down. Of course, she said, where you come down here for? You know, mm -hmm. no, no, down here for you. You know, you have a nice job. I said, Mr. said, mama, I don't want to do <laughs> cost engineering. You know, acting is not even what I went to school for, but I know I didn't want to do cost engineering, right? Mm, mm. So I stop everything and I say, hey, me going down and I go and seek my me, 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 me heart's desire, my soul's truth. I am going to seek it, whatever the, the, they can do. But I know it, what it was because at Excelsior in the 60s, I did The Old Man of the Sea in a pantomime simba oh. the sailor yes 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 and i did the old man and that was my first play officially where there you know i played before an audience and heap of people and thing and of course they have to hide because my father is like if me ever catch you i do any of them things is <laughs> <laughs> near you right so of course me lion all of that and tell me so me i study late and thing and the last night, me there's like accolades and everybody enjoyed me because my big thing was them give me poison. They give the old man of the sea poison. Mm. And me drop down upon the stage and all of a sudden my belly start come up. So, mm. which I could do. Mm. I can make my belly swell mm. <laughs> because it's something that God gave me, right? Mm -hmm. So that was the big thing. When them see the belly start come up, so them like and applause, applause. So the last night, me there's a me there take my nice bow and thing and come back up and look at my father in the back row mm -hmm. and then get up and him just do so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I start crying. <laughs> That's right. Can you know, say I hate that? Mm -hmm. That's you know what that means, right? <laughs> so, so um, me go home, you know, and then get the strap and then him said to me, um, you know why I go and beat you? He said, no, daddy. He says, not because of what you did, because you were very good. I was very proud of you. But you disobeyed me. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. You disobeyed me. Right. And mama outside the door, George, leave the boy alone, not this and this and, and mm -hmm. she outside the ball. And, and me get a little beat, my dear sir. But it was the best beating. Oh, yeah, sir. But our best beat never take because me no say, all right, him no no. That's right. 
That's that right. is what me want and left me alone and sit there. Go on. Right. You right. Chat to your seat there. You know, and you see me and you tell me, me good. That's right. And that, that part, they may pay attention to. Yes. Because that that would have made them beat nice. Yes. My father, my father tell me, say, no, man, you're good at what you do. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, beat away. Beat away. Right. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and you know, it, that was the first time he paid me a compliment. Because, you know, me never getting a hug from my father or not, not, none of them things, right? Mm. And the second time was after I came up, I went back down in um, like 89 or something like that. And he was living in Edgewater at the time. And, you know, we're reasoning and things. Well, first of all, we meet him at the airport. By this time now, me go to college and me learn everything and me forgive him for what he do for me, mad and all of that. Mm. Write him a scathing 17-page letter. Whoa. Yes, yes scathing, oh. right? Mm. So when me go, me figure say, I'm going to sit down and chat to me about the letter, right? Mm. No, sir. Um, first of all, we see him at the airport, right? And um, say, Daddy, I'm going to go and hug him. I say, I'm standing up, so. Mm -hmm. I mean, hug him is like he could have gone straight through another ground to run. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. So after me hug him and thing, you know, me, me all right. You know, mm. because me do what me have to do to release myself. Exactly. You understand? But um, we, we reach him house and thing. And then I'm still there for a, a, a little time. And one day in packing things into the fridge and he wasn't doing it right. And I take everything and say, leave, come, let me do it, right? And I pack it and so forth and show him how to do it. And you know, you turn the pot cover over so you have another space to put something on mm -hmm. top of You never do them things there, right? Mm -hmm. So me show him how to do all of that, right? Mm -hmm. And then we are chat and chat and him said to me, you know, um, you should have come down to Jamaica and do some work, you know. You would have get, you would have get all of our run for your money. Oh, well, yeah, say to <laughs> me. Oh, hold on there. What is it? Me yes. don't say you draw bricks. Me oh, don't say you hear bricks when you're not talking about Yes. Now. Yes. It's like, My goodness. Okay. You know. I <laughs> say, say, say to him, like me, like me, like it never mean nothing, right? I say, right. oh, it's up. I say, yeah, man. And then go on and go on and go on and then go on and we chat some more. But if you were active in, in professional acting from the 70s, what, 79, no? Yeah. Then. By the time 86 came around, you had been knocking a whole heap of pots. Yeah, so it would have, he would have seen the impact you were having in the industry. Yeah. So yeah. He, would have, he wouldn't have had the choice. You know exactly. I mean? Exactly. I mean, so exactly. Pick up yourself you, on that. Yeah. Let me tell you, my life, Charles, has been a series of divine order. And I live by divine order. And it's been evidenced to me from when I was a child. And it started when it was about 1961. It was before independence or something. And I was living in Rollington Town on St. James Road. And, um, you know, my father let me fix all the cowboy and get them kind of movie there and thing, you know. So my mother get vexed and she said, no, you're not taking us in a cowboy show today. You know, me taking him to go to, to, to the movies today. So we, they, she take me to the Rialto. And we went to the Rialto to see one potato, two potato. And um, we sit down, I mean, first time I exposed, get exposed to something else besides boom, boom, boom. I'm sit down and watch it, I'm gonna watch it. And James Earl Jones' father, Robert Earl Jones, was in it. This woman, um, Vinette Carroll, was in it. And the two white people then, right? And they were taking care of the white folks down south. And they were the stalwarts in the whole family because them are money and thing. But when it comes to common sense and emotion and thing, then run, come to the black people, them, you know, and so forth. And I watch the way them handle themselves and all of that and so forth, right? And the movie done, and we're walking home, and I said, Mama, um, that is what I want to do. You know, she said, what? I said, what those two black people was doing on, on, on the screen? She said, what, you want to become a maid? I said, no, man. I want to be an actor, you know, just like what they were doing, you know? She said, okay, okay. She was always supportive. She wow. was always supportive, always. Wow. 
So, um, you know, that, that happened, right? And in 68 is when I came to the United States and started school and all that and so forth. And, you know, did the college thing and come back down to, 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 to New York. Um, and made it fast, right? So anything that had to do with show business, mm. I was there. I don't mm. care what it was. I was there because that's what I wanted to do. So I went down to this, this place called um, the Players Workshop by this guy named Clay Stevenson. He was handling it. Let me tell you who did in there. Um, Howard Rollins, um, Wesley Snipes, um, Eric LaSalle, and um, um, who else? Some other people was in there, but they, they were they're luminaries now, right? Mm -hmm. They were there at the same time. And this um, <clears throat> a guy never reaching from Trinidad come in and, and say, Jeff, you know, this woman doing some auditions and, and you know, she need a triple threat, you know, and, you know, I, th I think she should go down for it. I said, well, all right, where is it? You know, so he tell me and give me the address. So I'm go down there the next day and I walk in and the, the, it was about 16 of us, right? And my turn come, I was about the sixth person. And I go in there and this woman hand me a grass skirt. And she said, can you sing? Yeah. So I take the, hey, the tech directions real well. You know? Yeah, well, all right. Cool. <laughs> so, so she gave me the grass skirt and she said, can you sing? And I said, yes. And she said, um, do you have some music? It was my first audition. I mean, you know, for sheet music, I think. I said, no, you know. So she said, well, just sing happy birthday, you know. So I sing happy birthday. She said, oh, you you have a good voice. Um, do you know something else? Can somebody sing something else? Yeah. She said, all right. And she pointed me to somebody else and said, um, uh, I think it was Mabel. Mabel will show you some choreography, right? And then you'll come back in, right? So two and a half hours later, my dear sir, this woman come, well, I, I didn't put on the grass skirt for the, the choreography. Anyhow. Mm -hmm. So the, the, this woman come, white lady, and she said, okay, um, I'll, we'll see you all tomorrow. So I said, is the call back tomorrow? What time? She said, no, darling, what call back? She said, you've been hired. You've been rehearsing, you know? I said, what? <laughs> <laughs> what? Yes, I was rehearsing, you know? What? So it, 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 the, the name of the play was Play Mass by Mustafa Matura, right? Or the, he's dead now. And that was my first production where I got my equity card and wow. I got my first review and it was brilliant you know about the the the, the, the West Indian with that it was West the, the whole thing was about Trinidad right so um after that now I got some other work with the same company I was with the company now the Urban Arts Core right in New York right. yes I was with the company and um, them have this little girl come in, you know, she was Chinese and she was um, Jamaican as well, you know. So Vinette, would, the lady was Vinette. <clears throat> this was the divine order. The same woman who me seen at the movie years ago. And says, this is what me want. At the same woman who I am meteorated. Wow. The same woman. That is the lady that is. Hold on. You didn't know, say the same person. No, no. Let me tell you how I find out now. <laughs> so, about four shows later, right? Mm -hmm. I am doing um, Alice in, in Wonderland, right? I play in the Cheshire Cat and mm -hmm. the White Rabbit and the Cheshire Cat, White Rabbit, and Mock Turtle, right? Mm -hmm. So. Um, this was Broadway, as a matter of fact. This, this was going to be my first Broadway show, right? Wow. So we were rehearsing and thing and thing and thing. And then we did previews. So the previews, they critiqued as well. So it came out in the post. No, no, no. Um, this guy wanted to do a special uh, article on me in the post, the New York Post. So nice, you know, so nice picture and thing. I have the picture I can share with you. Nice picture and all of that. And 
article came out, wonderful, full page article in the post, my dear sir. Mm. I'm reading and reading and reading. And it said, one uh, on the side of it, it said, Cheshire Cat and Director feuding, right? Mm. So I look, I said, what? Am I sure the matter about that means the Cheshire Cat and who me are feuding? <laughs> <laughs> so I got to, 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 to Vinette and I said, Vinette, did you know we are feuding? <laughs> you know, and she <laughs> laughed. And she said, darling, is when they don't talk about you that you have That's to stop. Right. It's a problem. It's true. Right. You it's know? true. Yeah. So we laugh about that. And then I finish reading the article. I finish reading the article. I say, one potato, two potato. And I read. I say, wait. And I got to Vinet. I say, Vinet, were you in one potato, two potato? She said, yes, darling. That was, I say, box side. So I'm <laughs> tell you. It's in my head. I try I mean, to process. Eh? You didn't tell her? Not right there. Not right okay. there. Okay. No. So I was processing all of that. And it was about uh, two weeks later that there was a moment and I said, I, I, I told her everything and she laughed and so forth and so on. And then the little Chinese girl that she brought in, mm -hmm. guess who that was? Mm -hmm. Antoinette Steins, Lacadco. Hello. What are you saying to me? <laughs> <laughs> what are you me, saying? Yes. So me. That said the energy turn up. Me like that me. Is no joke. What do you? And so me and Antoinette Rattin, we do so many shows together and them used to team you up because we look cute. We do half Chinese and we look yeah. cute. You right. know? Right. So, so, and it's from then, um, that's where I met Antoinette and it's from that time in you know, Antoinette. This was the 70s. Right? Wow. Yeah. And then later on, now, you know, further down, I do ancestry.com. This same Vinette Carl Medirsa is my me, is me, um, second cousin. <laughs> second cousin. Because. What's foolishness, man? What are you no, talking about? Let me tell you everything. Let me tell you about divine order. Everything just so. Everything just come down so. That is when. I started to believe in divine order mm -hmm. and I recognize divine order in everything that's around me and everything that I do so that if anything happens, it's never neg negative or positive. Right. It's a learning. Right. It's a learning because it, it, it is indicative of something coming up. Yeah. All I have to do is look, listen and obey and know that I don't control nothing. Stuff is being controlled for me. And I need to listen. I mean, I can help the process because I'm obeying, right? And I go ahead and I do diligently. But to really get into it, I said, this and I must, I follow me insides. I follow my soul's truth. And it has guided me this far because people look at me today and it's like, well, people think they're a boy. <laughs> they think they're a boy. Let, yeah. Listen, no? first of all, that is your fault. Right? Why? Because you are in your 70s. Yeah? Yes. Correct? Yes. And you're here black. <laughs> I mean, never say it. You're here black. <laughs> and you're not change the way you look from Nago to now. <laughs> Right? So you would understand why people would have said, no, I'm a young man, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, but that is the Chinese part, I think. Is the Chinese part do that? You know, well, because gray here, they, they, you know, gray here in all of this, you know. I see. But it is it's like onesie, twosie. It, this is the kind of gray here when we used to help my father pick out. You know, you remember them? Well, <laughs> me a 40, me a 40, 48 now. And the whole of this I turned gray. So maybe me need to just inject some Chinese in me and get it black. <laughs> because even today, me I talk to my cousin them and I say, and them I say, this the screen is choppy. I'm seeing a lot of white. I don't no, it's gray here. It's gray. <laughs> <laughs> you know. But who knows? At, at at some point, you know, that might change because even my stature. 
Mm. which in some people's opinion should not be like this even the doctor then say you know um i have to give excuse for it because they are looking at the chronological self mm -hmm. you understand and in my head charles me not me not, me not reach 38 you know you see yeah, man. Me no reach 38 around it because people are like, why are you so happy? And it's it like, what I have to be unhappy about, you know? And you can't kill the little boy. One of the reasons I can't kill the little boy is I didn't have a childhood. Me they have one tricycle mm. where they, where they get for use when my father feel like me did earn it. <laughs> the thing for you <laughs> you understand uh, so uh, that that is one when we go christmas market and me get me nice pretty dandan -dan, then mm -hmm. come home and they go in at the wardrobe for special occasion that never came mm -hmm. not one special occasion did come so by the time the damn clothes then come out the high water pants they have to go to somebody else where they can't, they can't fit them <laughs> you understand <laughs> so it's not a it's not a normal childhood you know, mm. and mm. when my I'm I'm unloading a lot of stuff, but I don't get to talk to people about this. Am I a good man? This is when... this is gold, you know. <laughs> but no, what, what I know, I tell you why I say it's gold. There are so many people going through now what you are what you are describing. Yeah, and your energy and your outlook on life is where the lesson lies. Yeah, man. And that is the reason why we reach out to you guys and say, yo, I want to chat to you because there's so many people who are in a situation that you were in a long time ago and think what they're in is impossible. Right, exactly. But you are living, walking, talking, tangible truth that it is possible. Amen, amen. True, true, Simon. true. true, true. So true, true. tell your story and go on about it, man. I want to hear. Well, um... Just before, all right, the whole wife beating thing and stuff at Jamaica, right? So my mother, she get fed up and she migrate, right? And she say, um, I, I'm going to go make a life and send for you now, okay? The regular thing, that's what you have to do. You come here, you me made and thing and so, all right. So she left myself and my sister, my blood sister, in, in my aunt's care. But it was the aunt who was on my father's side, right? She was a police woman. No, oh, Lord. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we did there live. And, you know, my, she and my mother did tight, you know, but they were ulterior motives, right? So my mother left and she left, left me and my sister with she. Uh, her name was Gurley, right? And right beside her, we used to live on Vineyard Road, right in front of up Park Camp Airstrip, right? Mm -hmm. 14 Vineyard Road. And right beside her was Miss Vassal, who was the inspector of police, who was her superior, right? So living there and so forth and mom used to send money to buy food free and so forth boss i eat more cabbage and salt fish <laughs> so but me say cabbage and salt fish to rot it me say we, we were waifs me and my sister and food, come in there, you know, food yeah. come in and nice meat and thing and she and her daughter get and she boyfriend get and them eat and thing and and me and my sister get salt fish and whatever. Mm -hmm. All right. Anyhow, time come. Um, for she now to go somewhere to move and go somewhere else. And I said, well, I don't want to move. You know, I mean, my school is here. It was Excelsior. I used to walk up to Excelsior. My school is there. I said, well, me said, me don't want to go nowhere, right? She said, well, you don't have a choice. So far and so on. Anyhow. We used to have words, and one day she come in and she said, "Boy, if you don't do that, I'm going to box you." I'm looking at her and I say, "Your wish, right?" Yeah. And she said, "What you say?" I say, "Your wish, you know, because I I had it. I just what you had said it. to me, okay." 
So anyhow, she sent down an Outlook Avenue because my father yeah, lived by Out Outlook Avenue by then, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. She sent down my Outlook Avenue for tell my father, say, me disrespect her and this and this and this, right? Oh. Because she couldn't catch me if she had chased me, right? <laughs> she couldn't catch me, right? <laughs> so, all right, whatever, right? I mean, I had made up my mind. I have had it. Right. It is done, right? And I was worried about my sister and what's happening to her health wise. So we outside, I play cricket in the back, right? And my sister come, no, her daughter come to me and said, um, Jeffrey, your father is here. I said, oh, no problem, you know? And she said, he wants to see you, you know? I said, okay, I'll come in, right? And me there, it was my turn for bat. So I mean, I left. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, I'm bat. Mm -hmm. You must get it in, of course. Right. You must you get know? this six. <laughs> right. <laughs> so anyhow, we're me, me going in, right? Now, go up the back steps, through the hallway, then the on the veranda facing, all right, Grafton Road is the back of the house, Vineyard Road was the front of the house, right? So the veranda facing up back um, airstrip. So me going, right? And me stand up at the door and I say, hello, daddy. He said, um, I heard you were disrespectful, disrespectful to your aunt. I said, no, I wasn't disrespectful, you know? She said, he said, um, what did you say to her? I said, she said she went box me and I tell her, she I wish, or she wish, you know. Mm -hmm. And he said, You don't think that was disrespectful? I said, She was disrespect disrespecting me first. She said, She went box me, you know. I mean, she was the disrespect. She said, Yes, sir. So right? <laughs> <laughs> She said, but but she's your aunt, she's your elder. I said, no, that meal makes no difference to me. You know, mm -hmm. you say, well, put your hand on me for absolutely nothing. You know, mm -hmm. no, I'm not going to take it. Him, then him, him take off the belt. Doom, doom. Come here. Right? I said, no. Mm, that's <laughs> right. right. He said, come here. I said, no. Boss, the door there, sir. Right over here is the telephone radio with all the the, the, the figurine them funny nice oh, dog and little girl with tink tink and thing and the, the the window them over here so and all three of them open right mm -hmm. get up and then come after me the nice big figurine dog find it marking him head boom what you said to me one time one time boom right what? and gone through the window <laughs> and be gone down the road right <laughs> <laughs> no man, I, I sentence thing I knew it. Boss, I had it. I mean, that is. I am so glad that the divine gave me that aspect of my being, because mm -hmm. when I say injustice and them kind of things, yeah, me not me, 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 no. And you when you see when you start beat a man and thing, mm -hmm. yeah. right, no, right. there's no reason, right. You know that you can't talk and communicate and you know it's like you know anyhow that's a whole other conversation anyhow me run down the street <clears throat> um you know let me just start bleeding and thing and then dressing head and so forth and then my sister come down because i went to her neighbor's house and she knew where i was and she came and we said i'm gone she said yes daddy left Mr. said what happening she said i'm um, on park packing to leave Mr. said all right make sure you go on you know she packed she said, but 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 what we're going to do? I said, we'll be all right, you know? And so, of course, me are fret now, and it's like, backside, what me cast? <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. I don't have a job, me in a school, you know? Mm -hmm. but the good thing was that my mom owned the house. Ah. And we had tenants. Mm -hmm. So, right away, everything come in to rot, and what me have to start do? Me have to mm -hmm. start collect rent. And mm -hmm. all of that, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm gonna forget to tell you before that, <clears throat> before oh, this is what caused the whole mess. Before that, I have a dog named Patsy, right? Mm -hmm. My dog. And Patsy go under the house. She was pregnant. She went under the house and she had her babies, right? And she 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 was fluffy, so she gets stuck with a pin or some, a, a, a nail or something, and then it 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 fester, mm -hmm. and you know. It, it just got night um, and all them things. So, yeah, so when she, you know, when Miss Patsy and she talked to Patsy, I mean, me talked to her about Patsy. She said, Patsy have cancer, he must be she, she must be put down. And she being the police woman now, she could have gone and shoot the dog. 
show wow. the dog dead and the dog have puppy under the damn um, um, to... house. You know? And <clears throat> after that, right, um, I had some uh, you know, I said to her, so what what you what we're gonna do with the pups? She said, just dig a hole and put them in there, put them near with Patsy. Me must dig a hole, bury my dog, and put the live puppy them in the damn hole and cover them up. No, right? You see, what that, you see what that was? Yeah. Anyhow, by the time you know, we used to see a buckle for, for, for the buckle man when he come by, right? The mm. DNG So by the time she come to me and she said, uh, go under there and get the puppies. After she killed the dog, you know, go under there and get the puppies. I said, no, you know. And she said, I said, go under there and get the puppies. I said, no, and I walk off, right? And then she started come after me and Miss said the and G buckle find her box. <laughs> <laughs> and the daughter start come D and G buckle. And my sister, <laughs> and she, my little sister, I cry and so forth. And that's when she called my father. 